Hey everyone, it's Big Z and welcome to Firewatch. This is a game that came out a little while ago and I haven't seen the whole game to be honest. I've only seen the first 20 minutes of it, but within that 20 minutes the game looked amazing. The art style is beautiful and the voice actors sound really good. So that's really all I know about the game. I think you're like, I think you're working at a national park checking for fires or something like that. I don't know. I don't know too much about uh... I don't know about the national parks all that much. I used to visit them all the time when I was a kid. My parents absolutely loved visiting them, but I never looked too much into what the different jobs were at the parks. Campo Santo presents... In cooperation. <laughs> I always start reading these and then it's like, also these people helped and these people and these people and I'm like, I don't want to read that much. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Never been to Boulder. You see Julia. Cool. It's a heck of a story. <laughs> oh, am I supposed to click? I'm a dingus. There we go. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from the nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. There we go. You are drunk. <laughs> Always a great way to start off a conversation. Hey, I'm drunk. And you are? So, what's your, you know, major? Or, <laughs> you're pretty. Um, I don't know. We're drunk, so she's not going to take us seriously either way. Um, I hate it when guys do that, so what's your major? You're, you slur your word, or you slur the word major, and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asked. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Dang, she's sassy, okay. <laughs> Was that a burn, you ask? She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you're Julia's boyfriend. Going fast and furious in this relationship. Cool. I have my extendo arms on today. But I want to press all the buttons. The graphics kind of remind me of like Team Fortress 2. A little bit. Can I just like run up here? Is that what we're supposed to do? Are we supposed to go up here? completely ignored the truck. I have a feeling we're supposed to go towards the truck. Ah, oh, the light of day. It's so close. Okay. Sorry, I always like to explore a little bit in the beginning of the games. You never know what you might find. Okay. Load gear. I also like that backpack. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket, or you adopt the Shepherd and name him Mayhem. Oh, this is so hard because I have a beagle and I love him to bits. But I've also always wanted a German Shepherd ever since I was a kid. No, I gotta go with the beagle. I have to. His name is Bucket. How could you not take him? Oh, and has a little bark. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. And he's scruffy! Scruffy dogs are the best dogs. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 at night, and the heat radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks kids? They're not very smart. Or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple of little idiots. 
Uh, that would be pretty good, or one day why rush? I'm kind of inclined to this one. This is where I wish I knew the character better and knew what he would actually answer. Or she. Um... That would... That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. <laughs> it's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Sounds like a dream relationship so far. So what does this have to do with the story? It's been a while since I saw this. So I can't remember all the details as to what's going on. I do kind of remember this part though, the story part. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call, you're worried and you're getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad, or you ignore her. Well, that's- neither of those are the solutions I was hoping for. You, you should probably talk about it, or at least, you know, talk about it in the morning. <sighs> you ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about the evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man, or you frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Victoria's Secret model, any day. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. I think so too. Okay. I like the colors, they're pretty. They're not like really like saturated or anything like that, but they're still strong enough that you get the the warm hues and all that vibes. Two forks lookout tower, eight miles still. Spacebar to hop over obstructions. This is kind of a cool way to do the uh, tutorial. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bubby ba fuck a d -d dog Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away, or you beat his goddamn face in. You scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path on from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. What'd she want the dog to do? How's a dog gonna do anything about a knife? It's not like he's, I don't know, Cujo or something. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate of department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. Come on, man, you gotta have some sort of wiggle room. You can't just stonewall her. I don't like these answers. <laughs> like, there's gotta be somewhere where you can meet them halfway. <sighs> Agree if she commutes back and forth, because if this is what she really wants, then who am I to stop her? I have to at least give her some wiggle room. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. That's gotta be expensive. The poor girl. Julia is sent home from Miel on paid leave after having an episode. 
She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him in just two days prior. I don't know, is she getting dementia? She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. I mean, we gotta go talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried Julia might be suffering from, suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Yeah, almighty, this took a heavy turn. I've never personally... Do we get to read this? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to blur that out. I guess that was his, the drawing of us as a Victoria's Secret model. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you're a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. Decide to move her into a full-time care facility or you are determined to take care of her by yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are hard decisions. Like, to me, it's not hard because if it was up to me, like, obviously I would take care of her by myself. But that is a full-time job on top of having a full-time job and not only that, but it's like one of those things where... You have to question if you're really capable of doing the best job, or if it, you should leave it to professionals. But then at the same time, there's this whole stigma against 24-hour care houses. And like, retirement homes. And some of them are correct, but not always. <sighs> I mean, like I said, if it was up to me, I would take care of her myself, so... It's not- I don't think it's the smartest move, but... It's the one that I could live with. Like I said, I kind of wish we knew the character more, but I guess we're kind of building the character through the story, so... He will become whatever we make the story. Oh, it's a deer! Hello, Mr. Deer! Goodbye, Mr. Deer. It might be an elk, I don't know. <laughs> Aren't I just the greatest zoologist to ever live? It might be a deer, or it might be an elk, or it might be the caribou that don't even live in Colorado. Okay. <laughs> I had to lighten the mood a little. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then, too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door, you trust that she sleeps like a rock. Come on, man. I get that it's hard, but can't you just, like, talk to someone else about it? Get advice? <sighs> Put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. 
It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Well, at least you were smart enough to do that. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. Take it. <clears throat> Are we not gonna go see Julia? Enter the lookout tower. Well, isn't just this is just like the lightest of light-hearted intros you could ever do for a game. Totally not like the first five minutes of Up. Okay. Spacebar? Why would I hop over? Is there something over here? Cistern. I can mess with the cistern. Totally know what a cistern is. Um. Apparently not. Apparently I can just look at it. What a pretty cistern. Okay. Cool. I guess it's like a water reserve. I'll stop- oop. I'll stop farting around so we can get up here. There we go. The mouse is more sensitive than I'd imagined. There we go. Why are there boards on the windows to make sure no one breaks in? Turn on the power. Ta-da! Let there be light! Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hello, radio voice. As I say, you might want to turn it around. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Hold left shift to activate radio. Hello? Oh. Hello? Hello, hello? Hello? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <coughs> what? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> that's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. <laughs> you take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... Look, sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. <laughs> oh, she's an interesting character. You've killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against your mom. Nobody back home can stand you. You're rebelling against your mom. Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well... She also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? <laughs> Me. I'm going now. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Sure. Good night. Welcome to the job. Okay. What an interesting introduction to the game. Are we actually going to spend any time looking for fires? Or is it just going to be like us doing this chatty Cathy thing back and forth on the radio? Oh, we did come out here to write a novel. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, 6? Six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it, that hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. 
But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Hey! Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I don't know which way is west. Someone help me, I'm a small child. Are those fucking fireworks? Oh. Sorry, I got distracted by, uh... I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Okay, yes, I see them. <laughs> Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. <laughs> Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. I kick the shit out of them. Can I write them a ticket? I'm not really into discipline. Do you think you can handle that? Like, kick the shit out of them sort of straight? <laughs> no, 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 no. Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Bah, get going. Bah. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is one, two, three, four. It's actually that for all of them. <laughs> uh, convenient. Convenient. That's one word for it. Can I take the cast iron pan? Beat the crap out of them with a the cast iron pan? <laughs> Turn into, what's her name? Rapunzel from Tangled. I wanted to read this. Can I not, can I not read it? What I roll? A nineteen? I don't know. A twenty? Cool. Oh, why didn't you? You shithead. Close the drawer. Okay. What am I doing? Getting rope? Where's the rope? <laughs> I was too busy messing around to actually pay attention to what I should be doing. Um. Okay. Where was the rope again? I'm guessing somewhere out here. Oh, it's so beautiful. I could get lost in a game like this. Literally and figuratively. Both are probably going to happen. <laughs> so be prepared. Okay, we have kerosene gas right outside. Our fire made fire watch- er, fire made. Wood made fire watch tower. It's always a good idea. Is there any way to like- is there any way to, like, see our objectives? At least I thought there would be. Okay, hold on. Okay. Find rope in cache box 306. Thank you, that's why I wanted to know. So... We are... Here. We're going that way? Okay. Does the arrow move when I move? No. Does it say where cache box 306 is? Yes, it does. Why is it telling us? Oh, that's not an arrow. That's the building. Okay. So, we're going northwest. So, like, that way. Okay. Okay, I figured out my life. Let's go. <laughs> if only it was that simple. Okay, I figured out my life. I need to go this way, this is the direction I need to be going, and everything will be dandy. I'm guessing we just follow this path. I found it! I think. I guess we'll figure out. Open. So we got a... one. A la dos. A la tres. A la cuatro. I like the symbol. That's a pretty cool symbol, too. Take the old rope. I don't like the fact... Deal with the whoever is setting off fireworks. Copy information. Cool. Pinecone. Wab... Oh. Waboosh. 
Go back to nature, little pine cone. Technically, I'm destroying nature by doing that, but whatever. Granola bar. Uh, we can't hold it. We don't. We have a giant backpack. We can't keep it. Well, at least you put it back in there. Okay. Okay. Ron. Hey, man. The guy couldn't take it, so I looked. <laughs> I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked hiking in the into the park. But let's get fucked when I'm back, Dave. Dave, you sound like an interesting person. What year is this? Because this was written in 86. So, how old is that, uh... I made the note disappear. I feel like a magician. Um... But no, what year is it? Because I kind of want that bar, but if it's, like, super old, that's probably not the best idea. Okay. What was I saying? I don't know. Um... Medicine wheel? The fuck is a medicine wheel? Where, where are the fireworks that are offers? Deal with whoever is setting off the fireworks. Well, where are they? Sorry, I'm trying to like listen to where it is, but it just it sounds central. I can't tell where it is. Okay, well I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here, and in the next episode we'll take care of the people setting off fireworks. I really like it so far. It's an interesting game, and I kind of like the fact it started off heavy because it's like one of those things where, I don't know. I'm hoping like all the, they kind of just did that to set the mood so you understand why this guy is here. You can understand, you know, what context he's under, all that jazz. But overall, it seems like a good game. I'm excited. So I'm going to leave this one here, and in the next episode, we'll take care of those darn kids setting off the fireworks. So I do want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in our next little adventure. Bye.